Welcome back. We are at the Texas STAR assessment page and we are going to look at the Algebra 1 end of course exam. This is your Desmos calculator training for this assessment. If you have not watched the previous uh, video, I encourage you to watch that one first and then come back and watch this one. To get to the page that you see here, go to your show notes and click the link and then when you get back, go ahead and click on the green button, sign in. The grade level you choose is EOC. And then you're going to go to the bottom one where it says Star Practice Sets. You're going to scroll down to the Redesign Algebra 1 Practice Test. Uh, for this page, the test attributes, I didn't change anything here, so I just click Select. You can explore that if you'd like. And then for these settings and general information, we're going to skip all that and click on Begin Test Now. Now, unfortunately, this test is what we call an adaptive test, which means you cannot jump through the test and leap forward to another to a question. So unfortunately, if I click on items up here, the only two items I can access are item one and two. But we've already done item those items in our last video. So we're going to skip to eight. So to do that, you click on the next button. And then it's going to give you a warning each time you click and you're going to say yes. Uh, now, if you want to go pause the video and work all these items in between, you can do that. But I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to question eight. So we're on four here because eight is the first one we're going to look at today. Uh, unfortunately, each video is going to get worse. So I may just skip this part and let you all click on through. <laughs> and do that without me. All right, we're on number eight now and we're looking at an expression that has a square root symbol and we are looking for a simplified version of that, an equivalent expression. And I really like these. Um, and probably you don't even need my help, but I do want to show you one little strategy that I think is kind of cool. So the first thing I did was I clicked on calculator and then Desmos calculator. And then I need to resize my calculator so, okay, so let's type in the square root of 75, S-Q-R-T. I know that's weird, but that's one way to type square root in Desmos is just type those four letters in a row, S-Q-R-T, and it will produce the symbol. The other way to do that is to click on the keyboard and use your square root here. Uh, but I did want to show you that cool little thing. All right, now we have four answer choices. Let's type in the first one. Type a five and then S-Q-R-T and then type in the three. So you have five square roots of three. You will notice that the expression they gave you and this answer choice produced the same decimal, so they are equivalent. The correct answer is A. The next item we are looking at is item number 10. So you do have to skip a question in between, but go ahead and do that and come here. What is the solution set for this inequality? Now there's two problems with this. Number one, uh, they're not going to let you type implicit equations, which means if you have stuff on both sides of your equal sign with variables, it's not going to let you type that. And they also don't let you type inequalities. <laughs> so we're kind of limited in how to approach this problem, but I do think this may help some of you. Uh, you may not need it, but let me show you a strategy that you can try. Now, the left side of this um, inequality, 12 minus 4w, I'm going to write it as a function of w. So I'm going to call this f of w, and then I'm going to put an equal sign, and I'm going to type the left side. And then on the other side of the inequality, I have 2 times the quantity W minus 18. So I'm going to come up with another name. Let's call this one G of W. And then I'm just going to type in the right side. So the question is, where is this left side of the inequality greater than the right side of the inequality? So, um, that you do kind of have to know what that symbol is. Uh, so one way I remember is less than looks more like an L, greater than doesn't. Uh, use your right hand for greater than, left hand, I don't know. 
whatever tool you can use to remember the name of the symbol, it's kind of important to do this problem. I need to know where the left side is greater than the right side. So I should have two graphs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out until I can see both graphs. And there they are. And then I'm going to click to get this point of intersection. Well, when I did that, let me click here to make that stop. When I did that, what happened is um, it gave me this point of intersection. And so you will see the eight there. So by process of elimination, I know not to choose B or to choose D because five is not in the solution to this system. And that's where one is greater than the other or one is less than the other. That's where it changes is right there. So the next thing I want to know is where is the left side greater than the right side? Well, where is the red above the blue? And you'll notice the red is above the blue, greater than the blue, to the left of this point. So you would say W has to be less than 8. Now, say if you try to type that in, I'll just try to type one and show you. It's not going to type in inequality. It says plotting inequalities is disabled. But in a regular calculator, you could just type X is less than 8, and it would actually shade in to the left of the 8 on the graph. The correct answer was C. The next item is 11. So let's go ahead and use the graphing calculator and graph this trinomial. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to move this down. Well, oh, I'm not doing too good here, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, like in the last video, I told you this calculator is kind of a pain at times. So let's see if I can fit it here. This will work. All right. So I'm going to type 2x squared plus x minus 15. Now what, what you may have noticed just now is I just graphed a parabola with only one variable in my equation. And that's because your calculator automatically assumes this is a function of x, so f of x equals, and it graphs it. Uh, so that's kind of nice. You don't have to add anything to it. Now I need to know which of these factors are or which of these binomials represent factors. And so one way to do that is to click on the graph and locate these x-intercepts of your graph because the x-intercepts are kind of revealing something about your factors. So I'm seeing a negative 3. I'm seeing a 2.5. So if you look at the answers, they all either have a 2 and a 5 in there, a 2 and a 3, and a, and a 3. So let's do the first one, which is x plus 3. I am containing these in parentheses because that is how you would type a binomial if you're multiplying it. And this is actually one of your factors. And the reason I know that's a factor is because it's, it's creating a line that intersects one of those zeros. So I'm going to keep that one. And then on the same row, I'm going to put the other factor because my other factor, when it's multiplied by this factor, will give me this parabola. So let's try 2x minus 3. And that's not working because I'm not getting the equivalent parabola. So I don't think x plus 5 is going to work because I need a 2 in there somewhere. Notice there's a 2 in the original one, so I'm going to skip that one. Let's try 2x minus 5, and that one works. So again, let me take this out to show you. If you do 2x minus 5, you have an x-intercept at 2.5. If you do x plus 3 you have an x-intercept at negative 3. So you put them together, you'll end up with a parabola with those two x-intercepts. So we should check x plus 3 and 2x minus 5. The next item we're looking at is item number 13. So you do need to skip 12 to get here. Uh, which function best represents the relationship shown in the graph? So we are simply going to graph these answer choices. We'll adjust our window to look similar to this one, but we may not need to. We'll just we'll just probably leave that. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our first answer choice, which is y equals 2x minus 4. And then I'm going to compare this graph to the one on the paper. So let's see if I can squish this in a little bit or the one on the test, you don't have a paper. All right, so I'm going to click on the x-intercept, and I see that crosses the x-axis at 2. Well, this obviously does not do that. It's also really steep. So answer choice A is not a good choice. 
Let's get rid of that one and change this to a 2x plus 2. That's answer choice B. Okay, now the x-intercept is negative 1 and 2. You can zoom in to make this look a little better. And again, it's too steep. It does cross at the 2, but the x-intercept on the actual test was negative 4. So this one's not working either. Let's look at answer choice C. It's down here. Y is equal to 1 half x minus 4. So I'm going to take out the 2 and put 1 divided by 2. The divide is right next to your shift key. It's the same button where your question mark is. And then I need a minus 4 at the end of this one. So minus 4. All right, this one crosses the y-axis at negative 4, and this one does not. So this is not the correct answer. So it must be the last one, but let's type it anyway. So y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. And on the test, notice it crosses at positive 2. So does this one. And let's pull this over. Oh, it won't let me. Well, having a fit here. All right, let's pull it over. And this one crosses at negative 4 and positive 2. And if you look at the test graph, it's doing the same thing, negative 4 and positive 2. So the correct answer is y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. And the last item we're looking at in this practice set is item 14. And we're given a function f of x, and we're asked which of these statements is true. So click on your graphing calculator. Let's move it over. And let's type in f of x equals, and just type in this function. So 12 x squared, shift 6 makes an exponent, type your 2, minus 36x plus 27. All right, so now I've got four answer choices, and you have basically, I'll do the right side first because I can see it right now, but these are in your answer choices. Well, these do not all equal this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the first one, f of x equals 3 times 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 3, and is that equivalent to the red one that I typed in originally? And it's not. So I know answer choices A and B must be incorrect because neither one of those have um, a, an equation that matches, that, that makes the graphs match. So let's go down to the last two, and obviously one of these should work. So let's get rid of this. And we'll put shift 6 and put the exponent 2. And then notice you don't see the red one anymore. If you turn off the blue one by clicking the blue dot, you'll see the red ones under there. So I know that's the right one or the right equation. So the next question I have is, well, let me try to resize this. My apologies. All right, let's just put this up here for now. All right, this one, the last two answer choices say the only zero is two-thirds, and the only zero is three-halves. So let's see what the zeros are. When you click here, you'll see the zero, which is the point on the x-axis where the parabola crosses. So I've got 1.5. Well, that's not the way it's written. So let's type 1.5, and then here on the left, this little fraction button, when you press that, it'll convert that to the fraction, 3 over 2. So the correct answer is answer choice D. That's all the items we're doing today, but there are more videos coming. There are three more in this series, and there was one prior to this video. So be sure to watch all five videos in the series to learn all the tips and tricks and skills that you need to use the Desmos calculator on your end of course exam. Visit technomath.com if you want to see more cool math stuff, things that you can do to help yourself learn mathematics using technology. Y'all have a great day.